Jeff Tehan. I'm a quality engineer for the Red Hat CloudForms product. In this demonstration, I'll be showing you how to take the new CloudForms VHD image, upload that VHD to the Azure website, and then create a virtual machine using that VHD that you can configure and operate within the cloud. So, thank you very much. This is the interface to the Microsoft Azure portal. This is where you organize your resource groups, your storage accounts, networking, virtual network, your interfaces, security, and of course, virtual machines. What you're looking at here is the old classic mode or the service mode, which we do not support. And this is the new resource manager mode. This is what Microsoft is pushing people to start using going forward. Right now I just have one virtual machine in here for testing. What we need to do is find these values within the Azure portal so that we can create a script that will allow us to upload our system. Resource groups are collections of like items. These are some of the resource groups I have on the system. Uh, the main one I'm using for this demo is CFMEQE. Within the resource group you can see all the resources. So we have virtual machines, security groups, interfaces, and usage, etc. From that window we can find items like the resource group name, the availability set, the storage account associated with it, and so on. For storage accounts, you go to the storage account tab, and here I have a storage account CFMEQE, you can see the resource group. Resource group is CFMEQE. There's a type of storage. The location is important in Azure. Blobs are where the VHDs will live, and within the blobs you have containers. I've created two containers, one for templates, um, which I will use to make copies of into the VHD folder. Uh, the VHD folder is where I keep um, the hard drives uh, for active virtual machines. And this is the blob endpoint. You need that information as well. The virtual networks. Um, these addresses can be found in the virtual network tab. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the virtual network settings. Inside the virtual network settings, you can have as many of these as you want. I've created one um, within the CFMEQE resource group. Um, you can see the address space for this, the location. You can see all the devices currently connected to it. The IP addresses are internal. So if you're going from one of these machines to the other, you'd use the internal value. The subnet, I have default, and you need the address range as well. The last item we're going to need is the Azure security account. Uh, security groups allow you to basically set um, what ports are accessible from the inside and outside world. So I have a, again, CFMEQE, and this one has no inbound and outbound rules, but you could set rules for like port 80 and things like that. So now that we have the answers to all these questions, we can begin to construct the script that we'll use to start uploading and creating the virtual machine. Uh, basically, I've just created PowerShell variables here. I'll show you how to use these later on as we go. First thing we need to do is open up PowerShell and log into our Azure account. Obviously, I'm not going to show you my password. You want to log in not just to your Azure account, but your Azure RM account. It is a separate entity. From here, you're presented with the normal Azure login dialog box. Uh, just enter your name, password, click sign in, and it'll kick you back to the uh, the other. It'll kick you back to PowerShell where you can continue on. All right, we have all our answers. We're logged in, so let's begin to upload the VHD image. Obviously, you need to download the image. Um, the images are available starting with 5.5.0 and also 5.4.4. Um, you just need to save um, the VHD image. You can do this over the network, but it's much faster if you just download the image. I put it in a temp folder, and then all these actions happen really quickly. 
So we're going to save that and we'll fast forward from here. All right, here's a demo script I've created. It has the resource group name, um, the container, and the blob, which I showed you earlier. Um, the blob name is basically the name of the image we're going to use. To get those blob locations, I, I touched on this briefly. But what you want to do is you want to go to the properties for the blob, and you'll see a setting called uh, endpoint. And basically, this is the URL for this blob. All right, so we're going to go into storage account. I'm going to show you the, the VHD images that we currently have in the blob for the VHDs. Um, there's also some monitoring and other things you can see here, uh, but we're not going to use them here. Uh, the diagnostics, these are used for um, keeping the audit logs when things go wrong. So we're going to upload that image, VHD image, um, as soon as it finishes downloading. All right, so the blob location, the container, and the name is our destination, and the local file is the Hyper-V image. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this script. Um, it calculates the hash and then it, up, it uploads it. Fast forward here. Um, it's going to create the new blob. I created eight threads on this so it goes reasonably quickly. All right, now that our VHD is uploaded, we can go back to the Azure portal. And when I refresh the screen, you'll now see the CFME 5524 video. And it automatically resizes that to 40 gigabyte. Okay, now we have a VHD, let's create the VM. So we have our virtual hard drive. And I'm gonna show you, um, we have a CFME 5524, we're going to add the one called video. So all those values we created earlier um, are here except the VM name, which is arbitrary, and the deployment size. Um, A3 is approximately 4 cores and 8 gigabytes, which is what we recommend. Um, we need various components. If, if you remember when I showed you the um, resource group, it had all those items in addition to the um, virtual machine. Well, that includes things like security group, public IP addresses, the actual interface we're going to use. Um, we just need to reference the availability set, the drive, and so on. And then all we have to do is this last line actually creates the virtual machine. So let me go ahead and run this script. And it's going to go through all those variables. What we're going to do is there's nothing to see here, so we're going to go to the Azure portal and we're going to do a refresh. And there it is CFME Azure 5524 video, and it's currently in the process of creating it. All right, we now have an appliance. Let's go ahead and configure it. Um, Basically what we need to do is the same thing we would do if we were doing this locally. We need to get the IP address. To get that, you go to the virtual machine. Once it's running, it has to be running to have an IP address. Uh, you'll see a public IP address, which is what we want. 104.42.196.151. Uh, and you can see the network, security group, and things like that. So I'm going to use PuTTY. This is a Windows demo. So we'll use PuTTY to connect to the appliance. I'm going to enter the IP address and connect to it. Right now we don't currently have a DNS. In a moment I'll show you how to actually do that. So we're going to add the key and we're going to log in as a default appliance root and smart VM. And now we can configure our appliance just like we would um, if we were doing this on VMware or Hyper-V or Rev. Go to the appliance console. I'm going to set up the database. I'm just going to show a few things here. Um, you probably know how to do this stuff already. The other thing is I just have a single database um, for this demo. 
you could set up uh, multiple hard drives for, an, for a virtual machine in Azure. So if you wanted to have the database on a separate drive, you'd have to modify your script to add a second data drive. All right, while that's going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set a, the, the DNS. What we want to do is we want to go to the public IP address. Um, from the public IP address, we can set users, view the audit logs, and we can do some configuration. Um, the first thing I like to change is the timeout. The SSH timeout is four minutes. Um, it gives you the illusion that your system's locking up, but really you just timed out after four minutes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a DNS label on the West US Cloud app Azure.com, and we'll just call this CFME Azure 5524.westus.cloudapp.azure.com. And we'll save those values. All right. Our database is created. Uh, I'm going to just restart the appliance just to make sure it's nice and clean. This will restart the virtual machine on Azure, so your connection uh, will need to be reestablished once this is completed. All right, now that that's complete, let's uh, bring up another browser window and you could go to the IP address, but let's use that DNS setting I created. Um, it is divided by region, um, so you need to make sure you add the West US. I'm in California, so obviously I would use the West US. Um, I have not installed a certificate or anything for this demo. So we'll just continue to the website. I trust it since I created it. And voila, one CloudForms management engine login screen. I'm going to log in as the default values, admin, smart VM. And there you go. Now you can't actually see your internal behind the firewall um, installations, uh, but you can see other cloud providers. So for the rest of this demo, I'm just going to show you how you can use Azure to manage your Amazon accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new cloud provider for the Azure AWS. Just give it a name. The type is Amazon. The region for this account, I believe, is US East. And I'm just going to not show you my ID and secret access keys. So while that's loading, um, I just want to go back to the um, appliance again and just show you that this is a typical appliance. So you can do everything from the command line that you would normally do um, on a local instance. So I'm just going to tail the EVM log just so you can you know, get an idea that things are running normally. And we'll go back by now. We should be able to refresh this. And there you go. We have 10 instances, 586 VMs. It's all connected properly. Uh, we'll look at some of the running instances here. What you'll see is the virtual machines that are currently running, or at least configured. You have some Linux, some Windows. It hasn't completely loaded yet. And that's it. This has been created on 5524, which shipped today, I believe, February 10th, 2016. Uh, for additional information, you can go to the Mojo page internally or the video QE. Um, page. Each of these are wikis that will have the written instructions that you can use to follow along uh, with the demo. So you don't have to memorize all this stuff. You can check it out. This concludes my presentation of the CloudForms VHD appliance uploaded to the Azure website and running with DNS.
Thank you very much for your time.